everyone, Andrew here, and welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking all about Nintendo Power, of course, Nintendo's official magazine, which ran from July slash August 1988 to December 2012 with a total of 285 issues, and I absolutely love going back and reading them today. They are just so much fun, and I really love it because, of course, you know, I love retro video games as a whole. You can just pull that video game off the shelf and it plays just like it did back then. It's like a little piece of history, but Nintendo Power is really neat because it represents a time in video gaming that to that point had never before existed and then after that point would never exist again so it's just so much fun to go back and read through them see what kind of things were out there at the time what people were maybe looking towards the future wondering what might come out and you know just being bewildered by how far technology was coming back in those days it just does not feel the same like a new console comes out these days I think compared to you know the jump between NES to Super NES to Super NES to 64 for the GameCube and such uh, so I can just go back and read these all day long and just have such a nostalgia trip it's so much fun uh, but if you've read the title you know what this video is really celebrating and that is that I have completed my 285 issue of Nintendo Power collection something I've been working at for quite a while uh, and people will know that I'm not one to really like run to the internet and just buy everything that I need and then call my con uh, my collection complete I've always tried to go out there and just kind of find issues wherever I can thrift stores game stores, swap meets and such. Uh, so I've just been having fun kind of slowly building up my collection over the years. And today I can happily announce that I have picked up the final three issues that I need to complete my set. Uh, so what I thought we would do today is just kind of talk a little bit about Nintendo Power and some of my memories with it to commemorate this occasion. This isn't going to be like a comprehensive, 100% inclusive, you know, uh, history of Nintendo Power and such. It's mainly just going to be me uh, going through some of the issues and such that I have, uh, talking about some of my favorite memories and also some of the things that I think stand out, particularly in the older issues, but we're also going to touch a little bit on the newer ones as well. Uh, so I hope you enjoy. But yes, the final three issues that I needed to complete my set uh, were 154, 163, and 280. So as you can see, I actually had already covered a lot of the really older issues and had the uh, the first half complete. It was just kind of some later ones I needed, like 280. You'd think, you know, that's a kind of a later one would probably not be too difficult to find than uh, 154 and 163. Uh, of course, you got Sonic Adventure was relevant back then. This is the March 2002 issue. Uh, Sonic Adventure 2, uh, 2 Battle, one of my all-time favorite games. So cool to finally have that issue. Here we have volume 163 from December 2002. Metroid Fusion was the big thing at that time. And then again, jumping all the way to July 2012, uh, we get Pikmin 3 uh, being all the rage at that time. Uh, so yeah, I just think it's so cool uh, to finally have it complete because completing, I think, the Nintendo Power set is not something that's on many people's radar. Uh, so even right now, with all the stuff that's going on, retro gaming is kind of going through a boom right now. People are trying to uh, collect, you know, video game sets, NES, Super NES, N64 in particular, uh, GameCube also just like skyrocketing in price as people stuck at home are trying to complete these things. Uh, but Nintendo Power... It's just something that, even as the price of video games has been going up over the years, not too many people have really had their eye on. So, uh, I just always had fun kind of going around and just picking up the issues that I can, but I did kind of crack and buy these final three off the internet. Just as I could say, before the end of 2020, I did accomplish uh, something. Going into 2020, I was missing about 10 issues still, and from the stores and swap meets and such I was actually able to attend this year, I got it all the way down to three, so I just kind of finished it off. Uh, and yeah, I'm really happy to own the complete set now. Uh, there's the kind of technicality though and not owning every issue of Nintendo Power because there was actually a spin-off magazine at one time called Nintendo Power Advanced. Uh, rather just advanced, no D on the end. Uh, which is uh, all kind of focused obviously on the Game Boy Advance and the games for it that were coming out at the time. So I'm missing issue two of that. And uh, you know, hopefully I'll be able to get my hands on that soon. Um, but otherwise, I think the kind of just main 285 issues are what the most people kind of consider when they're collecting for Nintendo Power, so I'm really happy to own those. Uh, and what I do when I get my uh, issues is I put them in these plastic sleeves, which are completely resealable, so it's not like I put them in here and they can never be read again. Uh, as I said, I just absolutely love going back and reading them all the time. Uh, but they keep them nice and protected on the shelf uh, and stops pages from getting like bent and folded when you're you know, sliding them in, uh, which I really like. Also, something I like to collect is old Nintendo Power strategy guides, especially the ones that came out pre-2000, the year 2000 because they're actually smaller more compact uh, i just like the art style and just overall you know feel that they have to them 
And I'll show you what I mean. Like this right here, for example, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time Strategy Guide, of course, 1998. And then you get this style, which I think is what most people think of when they think of official Nintendo Power Strategy Guides. Uh, and this is, of course, Majora's Mask, so it came out after the year 2000. Uh, and as you'll see, they are actually, you know, different sizes. You can see that the Majora's Mask one sticks out a little bit on top there. Uh, and that continued into, like, the GameCube and Wii days, but I really like the smaller, more compact ones, and they exist for a lot of Nintendo, SNES, and uh, earlier N64 games, so, like, the whole Donkey Kong Country series, Yoshi's Island, Mario 64, Mario Kart 64, uh, so yeah, I just think that those are fun to collect as well. Um, but otherwise, I guess one more thing we should also mention is that Nintendo, before they even made those strategy guides, uh, they actually released strategy guides that were just con uh, considered issues of Nintendo Power. Like, for example, this Super Mario Bros. 3 strategy guide is actually considered Nintendo Power issue number 13. There was no differentiation back then between an issue of Nintendo Power and the guides, and that went on for 14. There was also a Final Fantasy one and some other ones uh, before eventually they started kind of making guides separate uh, to kind of, you know, their Nintendo Power magazine. My history with Nintendo Power goes way back to issue 7, which my mother actually already owned by the time I was born, along with the Mario 3 strategy guide. So as a kid, I read the Mario 3 strategy guide and issue 7 of Nintendo Power just from back to front and front to back, like hundreds and hundreds of times. Uh, it was just so fantastic. And this is her or original uh, issue right here that, again, I've put in one of those plastic sleeves. I do have a better... Uh, you know, kind of nicer conditioned copy of it these days because as I read it so many times, uh, the binding is just all destroyed. It's pretty much falling apart. Uh, and if I ever took it out of this plastic sleeve, it would probably, you know, never go back in again. It's just so frail. Uh, but I do, again, you know, just have that kind of history with Nintendo Power and just loved reading it so much that eventually I did get uh, my own subscription to it around the GameCube days and continued that into the early Wii days before I eventually cut it off because with the internet you know, becoming more relevant, it became so much easier to find what you were looking for on there. It did not seem as important to have a Nintendo Power issue at that time, and especially just, you know, a lot of the character and such that, uh, you know, the magazine had back in the day was starting to slowly fade, especially around those Wii days. I mean, just the covers too, like, I love that, uh, you know, interpretation of Mega Man 2 right there. And even in, you know, into the GameCube days, uh, it was still great. But just uh, so many of the later issues would just be like, you know, character vectors and such. Uh, it definitely didn't have that awesome feel that the earlier uh, issues had. But yes, here's one of the earlier issues. And it actually has a sticker on there uh, saying that, you know, don't forget that this is your last issue. So remember to renew. Uh, and again, I did renew quite a few times. But uh, thankfully, you know, by these days, it was just a simple sticker on there reminding you to renew. But if your issues were running out back in the Super Nintendo-ish days, they would send you this disgusting thing, where this is your issue of Nintendo Power, as I've kind of noted here. This is actually volume 55, uh, but instead of having the normal cover, they've actually put this awful clown thing on top of it, even kind of wrecks the spine and everything on the back, um, reminding you to renew. Like, would you want to renew after you saw that? That's awful. Uh, so who knows? You know, what the heck their thinking was by doing that. I guess you're, uh, you know, it's encouraging you to never let your, uh, you know, subscription even get close to running out so that you never got the creepy clown showing up in your mailbox. But, uh, yeah, that, that is just really strange. So, thankfully, I never had to experience that as a kid because my subscription came a little bit later. Uh, but, yeah, weird. Like, I don't know what it is. Clowns have just kind of really disappeared. Uh, in the 2000s, I think for good reason, because there's just no need for them to exist, so, uh, no, there they go. Uh, but yeah, so of course, you know, enjoying Nintendo Power, uh, you know, the earlier issues, the later issues, it definitely became a kind of a natural thing, collecting all sorts of video game stuff, just loving video games, retro video games, the history behind them, uh, I wanted to collect as many issues of them as I could, and that just kind of leads us all the way back to having... You know, the earlier ones as well, I love going back and like reading, you know, the first issue all the way up to the last issue, of course, where they tried to make, you know, the front uh, and of, uh, of both of them look kind of the same, but just one's a very much more modern interpretation, where the other one, you couldn't even get his overall colors right. Uh, I mean, actually, I mean, it technically is right, I guess, because Mario's overalls are, are blue, but... It just does there's something very off about everything there. Uh, but yeah, it's just so, so neat. I mean, yeah, I guess the, the main problem is that the hat's blue. That, that's what really makes it look off. Um, but yeah, it just 
made so much sense for me to want to go back and get those issues of Nintendo Power. And during my early days of thrifting, it was very, very easy to just, you know, check out the magazine rack and find some issues of it that I could pick up for as low as 50 cents, even 25 cents sometimes. I walked into a Goodwill one day and they just had like 70 issues of Nintendo Power. I bought every single one. I'm like, why not, right? Um, and then it was... You know, a little bit after that, they got really serious, created a PDF list with all the different information, you know, the condition that each issue was in, if it had a poster in it and such. Uh, and then, yeah, just uh, eventually it kind of kept going from there. And again, I've never really wanted to just go online and buy all the issues that I didn't have is it was one of those last remaining things that I could go to a swap meet or somewhere and find them for a good deal. And I just feel really great, you know, saying, yes, I went to this event and I, and I found this thing. Uh, which doesn't happen too much with like NES games and such these days because all the ones I'm missing are in the hundreds and hundreds of dollars range where you can still get Nintendo Power for like as low as, you know, five or less depending on where you're buying it from but some of the issues are obviously worth a little bit more than that. Uh, so one thing to note though, you know, talking about the covers of Nintendo Power is that in 2007, uh, Nintendo Power was no longer under Nintendo's direct control. They gave the publishing rights to uh, Future who, had who uh, you know, has a whole bunch of different magazines that they published, so it, was it wasn't directly under Nintendo anymore. This kind of, you know, still had another company carry on Nintendo Power uh, in their spot. And what they did at one point was they created different covers for uh, non-subscribers and for subscribers, where the non-subscriber one has a lot more text and stuff on it. You know, it's obviously supposed to draw your attention uh, as it sits on the magazine rack, and it has to tell you a little bit more about what's inside it, uh, where the subscriber exclusive cover uh, doesn't have any of that. You know, it would show up in your mailbox, they didn't have to try and convince you to buy it, uh, you were going to read it anyway. Uh, so you got a completely different cover and you know it's debatable sometimes which one's the better cover sometimes i actually like the one that you pick off off the uh, store shelf more than the subscriber exclusive one we're not going to go through like all of them here or anything like that but uh, definitely just something to keep in mind if you are going to be collecting uh the later issues of nintendo power which again were created and published by future uh rather than nintendo themselves and that again right there was issue number 248 and yeah you get a, you got a lot of the different uh covers like that like if it's a pokemon themed issue it'll probably have one pokemon on one cover and a different kind of pokemon on the other like when they did black and white it would have been the legendary from one on the subscriber one and the uh you know the legendary from the other uh version on the other one so just something to keep in mind but that doesn't mean that you know nintendo didn't have their kind of weird moments as well where uh there was a time uh during the kind of late snes early n64 days where they thought it would be a good idea to get rid of the glue binding on the side of their magazines where obviously you know, they look really nice on a shelf when they just have that nice white binding that tells you which volume it is. Uh, but no, instead they decided that stapling the magazines would be a good idea. So they just look really bad when they're lined up on the shelf along with all the other ones. I mean, the fronts can still look great. Um, but yeah, I don't know uh, whatever possessed them to do that, but uh, I've always thought that that was pretty silly. Enough about the outsides of the magazines, though. Hopefully you're enjoying this. Just kind of me, you know, talking about my experiences with Nintendo Power. Uh, if anyone else out there is collecting Nintendo Power, has any kind of Nintendo Power memories, please don't be afraid to share them down below. I definitely love uh, to hear them because, yeah, I just think that Nintendo Power is just so cool. I mean, we spent all this time just talking about the outsides of the magazines. Uh, just wait till we start talking about the inside. Uh, so, I mean, again, just, you know, really nice covers. This here is, of course, the Star Tropics issue. Uh, you just get, you know, guides and reviews and previews of games always so much fun to look through. Uh, Star Tropics, even in this issue, has like a poster that pulls out and it shows you all the different islands and such, which is really neat. So you really just, oh, this opening one of these is just so much fun. This really gives you a glimpse into that moment in gaming. You know, what was coming out? How did people feel about certain things? You know, back when uh, graphics and sound, Castlevania got a 4.2 out of 5. Uh, you know, it was, that was like the big thing back then. Uh, I just absolutely love it. Uh, and it's just, again, so much fun to go back and read these, uh, even today. Uh, let's look at a little more of a modern one. There's one thing that Nintendo Power used to do, and I think is kind of cool, is they used to have the Nintendo Power Game Awards, where in the previous, uh, issue or two, you would vote for what you thought the best game in, uh, various categories of a certain year was, and then they would announce what, uh, got the most votes in a later issue. And, uh, in 1998, which is when this issue was released, this is issue number 120, uh, there's a very interesting winner in various categories, as you will see here. So for the 1998 Nintendo Power Award winners, we have Best Story goes to The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Best Graphics goes to The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Best Music goes to The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Best Sound goes to The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. 
Most innovative goes to The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Best gameplay variety goes to The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Best multiplayer game goes to a game that's actually not Legend of Zelda uh, Ocarina of Time. I guess it just proves they weren't actually, you know, someone just kind of going down the ballot doing everything the same just because why the heck not. Uh, I mean, it probably wasn't available for that core category, but hey, I'm surprised it somehow didn't win it anyway considering all the other things going on here. Best cinema scenes, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, and of course, best release of 1998 is The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. But look at those other games that were uh, runners-up. Pokemon, Banjo-Kazooie, like 1998 was just an awesome year for video games. Games. And to think that, you know, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time could win all those categories despite the fact that Pokemon and Banjo-Kazooie and even other games, you know, were right there with it in just such an epic year of gaming is really, really cool. And that's why, you know, you just go back and experience those times, like those games just came out and see what people are commenting on. People, you know, minds just blown away about the things that The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time did, wondering what Nintendo's gonna do next with Zelda. Meanwhile, you full well know, obviously, you know, what's gonna come next now. So, uh, it's just so neat, I think, going back and reading, uh, you know, those, uh, those older issues. And there's some other really cool things in here, too. There's, like, an uh, interview with Miyamoto. There's an invitation from Conquer the Squirrel to his cute birthday party. Aw! I'm sure that's exactly the way that Conquer's gonna be, you know, in the coming months and years. Uh, he's not gonna get, you know, an attitude or anything like that at all. Uh, and the poster in this issue is actually even of a game that was never released. It is for Harrier 2001. Hey, it's in, uh, you know, coming soon for near Nintendo 64. Uh, and anyone who's ever done any kind of Nintendo 64 collecting will know that there was never a game called Harrier 2001. And that's another thing that's so cool about Nintendo Power 2, uh, is going back and seeing things uh, discussed in them or, you know, previews of games that perhaps never even actually came out or perhaps, you know, beta screenshots and such of, uh, uh, of, you know, games, and they changed a lot along the way. Like, in this issue right here, this is Dr. Mario on the front, this is issue number 18. If you go to the Pack Watch section, which was always great for showing you uh, the games that would be coming out in the future, uh, it shows a lot of things that people are, sh you know, should be rather suspicious of, and you're gonna notice right away, uh, never really happened. Nintendo has fun in 1991 with NES releases, including Earthbound, SimCity, and Star Tropics. Well, you know, again, anyone who knows anything about the NES will know that only one of those games was ever released. And if you know me and my channel, what some of my favorite games are, uh, you'll easily be able to pick out which one of them uh, that is. But I think it's so cool. Like, Nintendo was already building up the fact that Earthbound was going to be coming out, uh, and then it just never did. And I mean, SimCity never came out. Uh, it, of course, came out for the Super Nintendo, but it was supposed to have both an NES and SNES release. And I think it wasn't too long ago that the uh, NES version of SimCity was actually found, a prototype. Uh, so you can't actually go out there and play that now, but it's just so cool to see them uh, advertising those games and previewing them here, uh, despite the fact that they just were never released. I also think it's so cool to think that Earthbound was always going to be the title for the NES version of the game, and I guess that would have made uh, the Super Nintendo one Earthbound 2. Uh, but they've since had to go back and call it Earthbound Beginnings, uh, you know, as they've released it on the Wii U and such. But yeah, just anytime I'm reading through a vi uh, an issue of Nintendo Power and I see something like that, I'm like, hey, wait a minute, that never happened. But uh, it's so cool to think that, you know, people were under the impression back then that it was going to happen. Uh, and you just find so many NES games if you look through all the issues that, you know, just never came to light despite the fact that, uh, you know, they were very clearly advertised. Uh, and another thing that I want to look at in some older issues of Nintendo Power that I absolutely love, and again, ties into all the things we've already just talked about here, uh, is the Player's Pulse section, also sometimes called the Mailbox, the Mailbag section, depending on, you know, how far back you go. And this was people writing into Nintendo Power, uh, you know, with their opinions on their games, what they thought about gaming back then, what they thought about the magazine, and just, you know, sometimes, you know, wondering where things were going to go from there. And, you know, who knows what's going to come out, you know, next, right? So, uh, in issue number one, is the first uh, letter I want to have a look at. And it comes from Trey Sullivan. He notes that in your 1988 February March edition, you asked for some power players. I think I'm a very good player. My best game is Super Mario Bros. On my best game, I had 160 extra men with over 1,100,000 points without time warp. And my fastest game without warping and saving the princess was 10 minutes and 23 seconds. Now that's fascinating because if you go and look on the uh, record boards right now, you'll actually find that a no warp, warpless uh, Super Mario Brothers speedrun record is just under 19 minutes. So somehow back in 1988, 
uh, Trey had found a way to beat the game without warping uh, in only about 10 minutes. So, uh, yeah, kind of full of it, but that's just the kind of funny thing that you find uh, when you go back and read these magazines. There were also kind of uh, leaderboard sections in the magazines as well, where people could uh, submit their scores because there was obviously no internet back then to go and read about it. And in the Super Mario Brothers section, everyone just has their score maxed out at 9,999,950, uh, which is kind of funny. Uh, but I mean, that's just how it had to be before there was internet and you would never know if people were lying about their speedrun records. Uh, let's turn now to another issue. This one right here being the sixth issue ever released in May, June of 1989. And they are Super Mario Brothers fan. They say, the graphics in Super Mario Bros. 2 are some of the best ever by Nintendo. Sometimes the enemies in the game even help you get through tough spots like Worlds 4-6. I, I guess they mean like Worlds 4 through 6, which is kind of an odd thing to be so specific. And I think it's weirder as well because in level 7-1, you have to use the Albatross to kind of help you get to the end. So, you know, why they're being so specific about World uh, 4 through 6, I don't know. But anyway... Uh, but the ending is the best thing about this game. Will you ever release Super Mario Bros. 3? And then Nintendo Bar says, We're glad you enjoy Super Mario Bros. 2. We are, in fact, producing Super Mario Bros. 3 for Nintendo's Play Choice 10 system late this summer. At this time, there are no immediate plans to release it for use with the NES, but keep your eye on Nintendo Power for updates. Now, the really funny part about this is that uh, by the time this was published, uh, Super Mario Bros. 3 had already been out in Japan in cartridge form for almost a year, uh, which is kind of funny. But obviously, we can read this now knowing that uh, Super Mario Bros. 3 is going to be released for the NES, but back then, it's like, you know, they just didn't know. Ah, uh, so, uh, it's just so weird. I don't know, maybe I'm the only one who cares about this. Other people are just like, ah, who cares? Who cares about these dumb things that people wrote in about? But uh, back when I used to read Nintendo Power, the player's choice section, the part where people mailed stuff in, uh, it was never my favorite. I was like, you know, I want the game reviews and the cheats and the classified information and all that. I wasn't too worried about what people were saying, but it's now, going back and reading it, uh, I can appreciate it so much more because it's just, it's just so awesome. I think it's so funny, you know, people not knowing what gaming would become all these years later and being able to look back at me like if only you knew if only you knew now let's look at a player's choice letter from the november december 1989 issue with a really funky kind of tetris cover there so this time we have dear nintendo can you tell me why the power light sometimes flashes on and off on my control dick sincerely andrea well, Andrea, I'm not so sure that Nintendo Power was the right publication to uh, select in regards of sending in that question. A medical professional probably would have been preferred. Uh, all I can say is I hope you have worked out uh, all of those issues. But with that said, I think I'm done reading increasingly weird Nintendo's Player Pulse section letters. Uh, but that's Nintendo Power. I just love it so much. I think it's so much fun to be able to go back and read. Uh, you know, this, the, the various things from back in the day, see the perspectives that people had back then before they knew what was going to happen, and it's just, you know, even more than playing the game sometimes can just take you right back to those moments uh, in the past. As I mentioned, I also did have a subscription at one point, and this is actually a letter I found that they would send you, you know, in trying to encourage you to subscribe again. Uh, so I'd be interested, you know, there's probably not too many, people, uh, too many of these still lying around. People probably got rid of them, so I do always kind of cherish those interesting tidbits. And also one more interesting thing thing I want to talk about is the Nintendo Power Index. Now this is something that would come attached to your issues of Nintendo Power every once in a while and it would tell you if you were looking for information on a certain game which issues of Nintendo Power you could find that information in. So for example this is the first copy uh, first edition of the Nintendo Power Index which covers issues 1 through 50 and opening it up uh, all listed in alphabetical order you can find the game you're looking for and it will tell you which issue that information is in and also what kind of information it is. So like, uh, for example, 1943, we can see that it has classified information in issues 8 uh, and on pages 71 and such. And it does that for all the different games. It tells you where you can find maps for games, uh, previews of games. Uh, and I just think that is so cool. Obviously, before you just had the internet where you could look up anything you wanted, a uh, resource like this was just absolutely awesome. And then there was the second issue as well. It covers volumes 1 to 60. And then uh, the third volume does issues 1 to 70. And again, it's just so neat to be able to go through that. And just, you know, anytime you wanted to find out information for a certain game, you could look up Star Tropics, you could look up Super Mario Bros. 3, any game you wanted. And if you wanted the tips, you could instantly find out, you know, which uh, volume of Nintendo Power you should be looking to find out about all that. And one other thing they used to send around was sometimes pamphlets for memorabilia and such. 
Uh, this one being from spring 1999. And you, I just looked through these and I'm just instantly taken back to, you know, this, ugh, the merch that they used to have back then. Like, look at that Ganondorf! Look at that Ganondorf uh, figure! And the Zelda one, and the Link one, and the caps, and the shirts, and just all the different things that they used to have. The plushies! Look at the Banjo plushies and the Mumbo! I have, like, the, the Wing Cap Mario and the Donkey Kong one there and the Yoshi one. Oh, but oh, even just like not owning it, but being able to look back at all this retro memorabilia. You get soundtrack CDs for like $10. That's incredible. No, I just love it. It's all these old things. I can just look back through them all day and hopefully this video has, you know, <laughs> been somewhat informative, somewhat fun to watch. It's not just me gushing at the fact that like I love looking back at the, uh, oh, oh, all this old literature. Because I just look back so fondly, it's like the 90s and, you know, the early 2000s, times when gaming was so different. Like, gaming has just evolved so much with better graphics, more memory, more everything. And yet I look back to those years, like 1998, where you had Ocarina of Time, Banjo-Kazooie, and Pokemon, and I just don't think that we have that experience anymore. You just don't have, you know, from every direction, AAA titles just smacking off your face. Uh, and you know, you'll, your only uh, option is to duck because you just never know what direction they're going to come from next. Uh, it, it was just such a different time. So to be able to go back and read these magazines and relive a little bit of that where, you know, you can play the games and experience it and uh, it brings back those memories, but to just be able to look at, uh, you know, the articles saying like, oh my gosh, look at this new Zelda game coming out and I wonder what's going to come after Super Mario Brothers 2. Oh, it just takes takes me right back. So uh, anyone who is also nostalgic for these old things, who loves you know retro video games, wants to relive a little bit of the past, escape what 2020 and who knows what 2021 will bring, I cannot recommend getting your hands on Nintendo Power enough and just reliving those glory days of games. So hope you enjoyed that. And with all that said, my next task is to take the new issues I just got, put them into those plastic covers, and with that, my 285 issues of Nintendo Power set will be complete. So thank you for joining me for this momentous occasion. I did. I do hope that you enjoyed that. Uh, despite how it was probably just me rambling for who knows how long it's been now. I hope you'll join me next time for something different. So thanks and see you later. Thank you so much once again for checking out my videos. I really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed, please consider leaving a like and subscribing as it really helps my channel out. With that said, hope to see you next time.